You have, Mr. Penfield. This is the annual award day, and... Are you going to listen to reason, or aren't you? I am not. No. You're just an old miser. That's what you are. A gloaty, greedy, stingy old miser of money. But you're not going to spoil my life. Mr. Penfield... Well, I'm not going to let you spoil your life. Rodney and I don't have to use your money, you know. I have a little of my own. I won't let you give money to that... Nincompoop? Nincompoop, exactly. I forbid it. And I don't suppose you'd allow me to marry him, either? Most certainly not. I forbid that, too. I forbid you even to see this key gold digger again. Is that your final word? That is my final word. I'll wrap your ears around my final words. I'm going to give Rodney everything I have. I'm going to help him put over his subdivision idea. And I'm going to marry him whether you like it or not. Oh, you are, eh? Well, I'll put a stop to that, young lady. Ash, come in here at once. I'm right here, sir. Uh, where have you been? Oh, I've been here quite a while, sir. Ever since Miss Barbara called you an old... Let, let that pass, will you? Where are you standing there with that, with that shaving mug for? But, Mr. Penfield, this is the Penfield Stop trophy and... Stop blithering and put it down. Uh, yes, sir. I want you to stop my daughter's allowance. I want you to tie up her bank account. Yes, sir. I'll show her who's boss of this family. I'll teach her a lesson. Yes, sir. Well, what are you waiting for? Why, uh, uh... Oh, <laughs> get that champagne mug out of here. But, Mr. Penfield... What is it? What?
Now, wait a minute. Oh, I've waited years to play this hunch. But all those suits, that's an awful lot of jack to lay out. It's only the beginning. Only the beginning, folks. Come on, come on. Give me the rest of it before I call the silly way. Well, I want some luggage, a set of golf clubs, new bag, one good piece of jewelry, and a snappy car. That's where I come in. You ain't going to buy a second-hand car. Well, I got to have a... Because I'm going to get it for you. I know more about engines than you hey, ever wait a minute. Inventor. Leos, Mr. Bassett, you got to stood still. You stay here and play pin cushion, and I'll get the chariot for you. Hey, Pete, come back here. Bye-bye, Sonny. Well, good morning, miss, and what can I do for you? I've got to raise some money right away. I see. And I want to sell my car. Well, young lady, you certainly came to the right place. Most of the boys along this drag had picked the fillings right out of your teeth. But not old Doc Adams. Golden Rule Adams, that's what they call me. Square with one and square with all. How much do you got to have? How much is the car worth? Well, you see, lady, it's all a question of what I can sell it for. It's a pretty looking job, but it sure is a cream puff. Cream puff? Yeah, yeah. Too swell a heap for the used car market. Guys buying used cars can't buy gas for these big berthers. That makes them hard to sell. Just a headache. But the car's only a month old. Oh, sure, I can see that easy. If it was a little older, I could give you more on it. You mean you'd pay more for an older car? Yeah. Mr. Mm hmm. Proves there ain't no flaws in them when they've stood up for, say, uh, 10,000 miles. <laughs> oh, a lot of angles to this uh, this business, miss. How much will you give me for it? Mm, I don't know. I always get myself stuck buying cars. Got too soft a heart, I guess. How much will you give me? Well, I'll tell you. Just on account of you, I'll give you 400 bucks, cash on the line. 400? You know how much the car's worth. Sure, sure, I know that, but just trying to do you a favor, that's all. The car's insured for... Uh -uh. Now, lady, I don't go in for no rackets like that. If you want to have your car swiped for the insurance, you'll have to try to find somebody else to do it. No, 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 you don't understand. I've got to raise money. Now, if you make any sort of a decent offer... Well, uh, how about some sort of a trade? Maybe a little cash and one of my fine, slightly used cars. That might work out. Wait a minute, my dear, wait a minute. What are we stopping here for? Well, I just happened to recollect, my dear, that a dear old pal and bosom friend of mine runs that jalopy joint over there. Good old Doc Adams. That's the name, all right. But what's any old friend of yours doing out of jail? <clears throat> now, now, my dear. Have a little respect for your father, please. I'm sorry. Do you suppose he's good for a touch? Friend like old Doc? My dear? We're practically sitting down to lunch at the Ritz right now. I know. Let's make it five full dinners at the beanery instead. Patience, my dear, patience. While your pappy puts the bee on old Doc Adams. Good luck. Way to greet a pal, to welcome a man with whom you trod the paths of adversity, to shun a loving brother. Oh, scram, I'm busy. But, but, but Doc, is one friend to another. I'm... Well. Sweet job, buddy. Yeah. Certainly is. Practically new, ain't you? Practically. How much you asking for? 
Asking for, uh... I asked you how much. Uh, uh, well, uh, that depends. Uh, what do you mean, depends? How much you've got. I mean, uh, on various things. Yeah, never mind the build-up, Toots. All I want to know is how much you want for cash. Cash? Cash. Uh, 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 make me an offer. Mm, 400 bucks. So. Hey, wait a minute. What's the catch? Catch? There's no catch. This car ain't hot, is it? Well, I should say not. Well, uh, what's the idea? Uh, well, you see, I'm uh, getting out of the... U Well, you, you should not have left your keys in it. But it's all your fault. Oh, no, no, no. Wait a minute, lady. You can't hang that swipe on me. I got an alibi. I was with you. But if you had wasted so much time trying to make that cement mixer do 50... You wanted a demonstration, didn't you? I didn't ask for Cook's tour. Well, say, it may be a lucky break for you with that. Now you can get that insurance money you were talking about. Of course, you'll uh, have to wait 90 days. I can't possibly wait that long. I've got to have the money today. Now, what am I going to do? Uh, well, I'll tell you, miss. To show you my heart's in the right place, I'll make you a deal. Yeah? Sure. I'll give you that swell little clothes job and maybe a little cash besides. Oh, thank you. Uh, for that diamond ring you're sporting. Come on. Oh, I'd forgotten about that. Well, it's a go. All right. Come on in the office and we'll report the swipe. Oh, uh, uh, what was the license number of your car? License number? Well, I don't know. Oh, well, the cops can check up on it. We'll phone them, and then we can fix up the papers on this ring deal. Hey, Jerry, Jerry, come in, come in. How do you like it? Here's your change. And here's your bill of sale. Well, I still don't believe it. Mr. Bassett. Yes, Mr. Bassett. You didn't tell me where I should send these beautiful garments. Well, how soon can you have them ready? Oh, oh, I couldn't possibly have them before next Monday evening. And if I gave you an extra ten dollars for a rush job?
I'm sorry I didn't remember you. Is your father coming down too, Miss Penfield? I hope not. And if you should phone, don't tell him I'm here. When father gets like that, he just won't listen to anything. I don't want to appear critical, Barbara, but it does seem to me that you gave up too easily. But Rodney, dear, I told you... After all, I'm willing to let your father in on the grandest seaside subdivision ever planned. Oh, I know you are, dearest. And it's sweet of you to be so generous when he's been so unkind, but father... But you know what it means to us. Of course I do, dear. Now, perhaps your father has cooled off by now. And if you go back to the city and have a talk with him, he might consent to see me. He's just set a new record for high blood pressure. All right. Very well, I'm, I'm through. All my lovely dreams. My wonderful plans for our future. Oh, don't say that, dear. Look on the brighter side. Things are a bit better, you know. Better? Yes, your hotel bill is paid. You have a little money besides. Yeah? Your money? To think that I'd have to ask you for money. But it makes me so happy to be able to help just a little bit. You know... And now I have an idea. Oh, really? You bet I have. You know, there must be simply oodles of people staying here at this very hotel. And don't you think you could persuade one of them to invest in your subdivision idea? What do you think I've been doing down here? Playing marbles? Oh, you mean you tried that? Of course I've tried it. No one has any money to invest. Oh, they have plenty of money. They won't part with any.
Bassett. Now, this is no time for false modesty. Well, as a matter of fact, I have delivered some of the biggest men in the city. That's... Mr. Randall? Yes. This is for you, sir. Oh, thank you. Excuse me, Hunter. Go ahead. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, I'll have to ask you to excuse me for a minute. Um, will you look out for the young lady, Bassett? Well, it'll be a pleasure. Thank you. Okay, then. That gentleman, sir. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, pardon me, uh, Colonel Cornelius? At your service, sir. Uh, Mr. Randall, I believe. Yes. Uh, uh, Prudence, dear, I want to introduce you to the gentleman we've been waiting for, Mr. Ebenezer Randall. I'm delighted, sir. I'm sorry, Colonel, there's been some mistake. I'm, I'm Rodney Randall. Rodney Randall? Yes. Well, well, swap me for Yankee, sir. <laughs> well, I never dreamed there could be two Mr. Randalls. I presumed, of course, that you were the emissary from the United Tobacco Growers. I'm sorry, no. I, I'm the subdivision, Randall. Oh, well, I'm mighty glad to make your acquaintance, sir. Thank you. And I'm pleased that the other Mr. Randall ain't shown up tonight. I, I'm a little bit too tired to argify with him. Oh, Pappy, why don't you just let them other growers have their way? What? And bust the tobacco market wide open? Why, honey, you know I grow more than all the others put together. But that wire you had from Washington, from the president. Now, listen, honey, child, you let the president run the nation and I'll run the tobacco business. And I be... Why, well, I beg your pardon, sir, for losing my temper in your presence. But it gets so tarnation mad. Happy? Sir. I apologize again, sir. That's quite all right, Colonel. I understand exactly how you feel. Do you indeed, sir? Absolutely. I realize how annoying the small fry of competition can be. Mr. Randall, you're a man after my own heart. I'm a humbly ask that you'll do my daughter and myself the honor of uh, joining us at the bar in a small refreshment. It'll be a pleasure, Colonel. Uh, come, come, darling. I can't imagine what's detaining Mr. Randall. Oh, whatever it is, I'm in favor of it. You're just being polite. Oh, do you really think so? I know you businessmen. You'd much rather be talking about bonds, mergers, and big deals. <laughs> oh, not right now, I wouldn't. Why, with all this beautiful moonlight, I'd much rather be talking about... Just what line of business are you in, Mr. Bassett? Well, as a matter of fact, I'm sort of between operations right now, as it were. Oh, really? <laughs> yes, I... Uh... I just closed my last enterprise. A successful one? Oh, very. My association and myself cleaned up plenty. As a matter of fact, we left some of the biggest businessmen in town with hardly a shirt to their back. How delightful. Uh, Mr. Randall, miss. Uh, if you'll excuse me. Surely. Will there be an answer? No, thank you. No bad news, I hope. Yes, uh, in a way. Mr. Randall's been delayed. You called me Jerry this afternoon. Oh, did I? I don't remember that. <laughs> yes, you did, B. They, um, uh, tell me that the hotel has some very lovely gardens somewhere around. It has? Yes, shall we, uh, try and find them? Well, it's getting a bit chilly, don't you think? Oh, but it's not that cold. Well, I'd have to get a wrap. Well, I'll wait. All right. Hi, boss. Well, Sherlock, sure, did you find out anything? You bet I did. She's a guest. Room 203. I slipped in while she was out. She got a lot of swell clothes, a pip of a dresser set, and some peachy perfume, too. Here, smell. Mmm, P.U. Kind of gets you, don't it? Sure does. Well, what else did you find out? Her real name's Barbara Penfield. Barbara Pen... Oh, don't be silly. I saw her signature on the register card. She's old F. Thorndike Penfield's daughter. But that little hitchhiker... Why, she's no more Penfield's daughter than I am. Four-flusher, huh? Maybe I'd better tell the manager. Oh, no, don't do that. Not yet. You just keep your mouth shut and your eyes open. Now, go on. Okay, boss. Well, uh, here I am. Oh, you all set? All set. Oh, that's fine.
want you to meet Mr. Bassett. This is my daughter, Prudence. How do you do, sir? <laughs> How do you do? I need your indulgence, but this is most important. Secretary of the Interior. Won't you sit down, Miss Prudence? Oh, thank you, sir. Tell you my patronage. Uh, you lost that bundle at once. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Cranfield, but... Uh... <laughs> Hey, there he is now. Now's your chance to go and order him to leave. I'd like to oblige Mr. Canfield, but... All right, then. All right. I shall never be a guest of this hotel again. Well, um, who's, that, who's that chap with him? Oh, you mean that fellow with Mr. Randall? That's Mr. Bassett. That, yes. that name is familiar to me in some hmm. way. What a charming chap. Successful, too. Nice car and good luggage. Nice car, good luggage. Mm. Mm. That opens up a new line of thought. <clears throat> if there's anything I can do, Mr. Penfield. Not a thing. Thank you. Not a thing. <laughs> Your father's very lucky to have you around to remind him of things. Oh, he's most forgetful, the poor dear. And the secretary'd just be wild if and Pappy sold his crop without letting Washington know. Really? Oh, yes. It always floods the market when Pappy sells his cuttings. Oh, I see. She then. Young man over at that table with the little mustache and the blue. Yes, sir. Tell him a gentleman would like to see him in the lobby right away. Yes, Mr. Penfield. Don't, don't, don't uh, tell him my name. Just say a gentleman. Very good, sir. Uh, <clears throat> come here, young man. Oh, uh, excuse me. Uh, no. Now, wait a minute. I want to talk to you, please. To me? Yes. There must be some mistake. There's no mistake. Uh, you're the man I want. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, sit down, please. Uh, but I've got to see a man about a... Sit, sit down. I've been talking to the uh, manager of the hotel about you. To the manager? Yes. Um, and he gave me a lot of information about you. I suppose he would. Yeah. He said you were an uprising, energetic go-getter. He said that about me? Yes, and a lot more, Mr. Bassett. Bassett? Yeah. <laughs> I know who you are, you know, Bassett. Uh, well, that's very nice. You, you know who I am? You're Mr. Penfield. Well, sir, now we can talk business, you know. You'd, uh, you'd like to make something? How? My foolish daughter thinks she's in love with a good fortune hunter, Rodney Randall. I see. You, uh, you know him? Uh, we've met. Yeah, oh, of course. I've seen you together. Well, we must cure her of that mad infatuation. Completely? Permanently. She's going to fall in love with you. With...
Well, goodbye for a while. Goodbye. Bye. Quick, your father. Come back here. You, you bought to a bandit. You, you should be ashamed of yourself. Go in your room. How, how dare you entertain this Wango fellow in a sheet? He wasn't in the sheet, Dad. I was. Don't, don't quibble with me. You know how I hate quibbling. Never, never quib. Was I quibbling? But you said that. I never mind what I said. Get into your riding clothes. Why? Don't ask me. Do as I say. I can't understand this sudden yen of yours to play jockey. Well, you know, I've always loved horses. Now, if you loved them, you'd stay off of them. Oh, well, I'm... Oh, look who's here. Where? Over there. My old friend and business acquaintance, Bassett. Bassett? Yeah. Uh, Jerry, please, please, please. Babs. Hello, Mr. Benfield. Hello. This is Jerry Bassett, my daughter, Babs. This is a pleasure. How do you do? Um... You look so you're going riding too? Yes, I am.
Well, Colonel, how about you playing a game? I fear I've played my last game, sir. <laughs> Why, Colonel, a young man like you? <laughs> Did you observe that gentleman with whom I was just conversing? Oh, I had a glimpse of him. My doctor. He advises me to leave for the seashore <coughs> at once. Really? It's a matter of life and death. Poor old Pappy. Worst of it is, I'll have to dispose of my vast tobacco holdings for whatever I can get. What? Sell the old plantation? What must be, honey, must be. If you would be interested, Mr. Bassett. Well, I... Well, I suppose you come up to my room and we'll talk it over. Hmm? <laughs> so I promised him I'd make love to you. Pretty funny, huh? Yes. Certainly a good one on Bassett. I get your father's blessing and he gets a kick in the pants. He's rather nice, chap. Who? Oh, oh, Bassett? Sure he is. Say, by the way, how are you doing with him? What do you mean? Well, you know, about getting him to invest in my subdivision. Oh. Say, look here, Babs. You're not letting me down, are you? No, of course not. Only... Only what? Are you sure your property is good as you say it is? Dearest, how can you say such a thing? Sorry, Rodney. I should think you would be. After all, dear, you, you know how much...
Yes, sir, Mr. Penfield. Room 304. Right away. Hurry, please. Room... Uh, uh. Hello, Dad. Did you enjoy your ride? What am I doing? I'm sitting on a young man's lap. Oh, a very nice young man. He's going to be vice president of your plant and your son-in-law. Yes. His name? Oh, I'm not quite sure. I th Bassett. Ah, uh, Bassett, thank you. J. Walter Bassett. <laughs>
Babs, Babs, Babs. That's, uh... This way with my bags. I leave this hotel forever. I beg your pardon, is something wrong? Out of my way, Mujik. What is your name, sir? Oscar, Grand Duke of all the Russians. Oscar! 